so this is the review of the 2016 Viper ACR. This is one part of the review a lot of people don't think about. It's how insanely low to the ground these are. And I hit all over the place with this thing. It's not if I'm gonna hit, it's how bad. I'm gonna hit how bad I'm gonna rub. It is not the most friendly on the street. I mean, you see it, it'll scrape everywhere you go. It's really rough. It's terrible for a daily driver. On the track, it is the most behaved, the most incredible car you can take on a track. If you could drive a manual, which this manual is incredible. This is a Tremec six speed and I love it. It's really heavy, heavy clutch. It'll wear you out in traffic type of clutch. It's just put together so well. This is the pinnacle of Vipers. And I never ever thought of these as track cars. I always thought of them as just kind of American white trash supercar, right? That you could just go rip around on the street like how we saw the first time ever. I think that was the nutty professor we all saw our first glimpse of the Viper in action. The professor? Hello, Jason. Yeah, I know. I make fun of Robert a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know him getting in this thing. Get in there. Get all the way in. Uh -huh. There. This sucks, dude. Perfect. You look really good in there, though. <laughs> it's not easy. It's you got to basically shoehorn into this thing. It's very, very tight. Uh, Garrett uh, Cletus, he's actually driven this. Uh, you should ask him about it. It is not an off-road vehicle, even though he treated it like one. But he fit in it well enough. And uh, I would say had one of the worst videos ever. He just filmed point of view on the track. And you know, he was younger, he was experimenting with videos. We had a really cool one that we shot together but prior to that, and this was the one we took to the track. You know, as a YouTuber, I never really realized like you struggle with like music and uh, what you can and can't use and how quickly you need to put things together. So like I droned all day long and had this incredible drone footage and he just couldn't use it because it would take time to montage that, lay music over it. Uh, you know, the audio is obviously silent on a drone. So it was just what he had for the day and was just a drive down with him and his girlfriend at the time and us friends and brother and everybody just cruising down a couple hours to this track. Well, uh, you know, it's just one of those videos that just, it's, it's tough to watch and uh, it didn't do very well. And uh, that was like the first introduction and in, like the struggles of like what Garrett goes through, you know, to put out good content. It's not as simple as you guys think. He is a master now. I mean, his whole day can be immediately planned out for a YouTube video and it just comes to him and he knows exactly how to put it together. I, on the other hand, struggle with it immensely. I love doing the longer videos uh, that are basically put together well and high quality type of stuff. This uh, daily vlog stuff is uh, is quite a bit harder for me to, you know, wrap my head around all the time and make sure it's put together well so that my editor doesn't have to constantly piece things together and cut it all up. And he could use these big long shots like this and eat up a lot of time. And it's just good information that people like to watch. You know, it's, it's real, it's reality. And that's what we all crave and go after when we're watching these YouTube channels. It's why, in my opinion, YouTube has been an explosion. So back to the review of this car. It is really geared really tall. So the second gear, 40 miles an hour. That was up to 60 something. I got a stoplight. <laughs> but what I did with this, it was a little anemic. I, uh, shocking, a Viper was a little underpowered. It's put together so well that it feels underpowered. It smashed all these records at the racetracks. It had a cage in it. It had a driver that didn't own the car. He was a professional. And if you really want to send this uh, car, it will constantly be there for you. And the traction control is actually really good on this. I rarely take it off completely. One, I'm not a professional driver trying to set lap records that really matter. It's for my own personal PRs. and. Uh, it's it's like one of those things that you know I just don't push so I leave the traction control on a little bit and it doesn't interfere at all I mean it slightly reduces power on exit and entries stuff like that if I start to get a little loose but it, it handles really well right now there's a woman in a old uh, Honda Civic 
she's got to be 70 years old just loving this car everybody loves the viper you can take this anywhere and uh americans love this car it's really the only american supercar ever made i mean everything else is a sports car uh you know the mid-engine corvette's fairly supercar ish but it's still a sports car to me and and i want i'm not biased i will say that my porsche is a highly modified sports car as well it's not even a supercar in a lot of ways but anyhow uh the viper is just so well handled on the road but like i said it doesn't have that much power and what what i found over time when you have cars that are put together really well that are well balanced that are well behaved on a track you'll notice the power is, is just perfect and us americans will say hmm it's not enough so you'll notice that when a car is put together well and like i'm saying here i wanted just a little bit more because i'm american and i felt a little bit more so i put uh open pipes on the side you know basically header back all open and put a little tune on it and now at about 5,000 rpm it really kicks in so if you guys didn't know uh dodge actually created quite the exotic motor for this viper um it was touted to be the american ferrari type motor a very exotic motor is what they said that they were creating very similar actually to a VTEC. and what people don't understand why don't you throw a turbo on this why don't you throw a lot more power at it one i don't want to ruin this car but let's say i had another viper they're very limited on what you can do to them because they're actually a very uh complicated uh motor they're not just a normal ls type motor with a couple extra cylinders they're actually fairly complicated and they have a really you know interesting vtec type system but the cool part is at 5000 rpm now it really opens up it's a it's a whole another car it's another probably 50 75 horsepower and it's breathing better it's not obnoxiously loud either uh these motors are very boat like the, the engine sound is very unique and i would venture to say i don't like it i i don't think it's the best sound but as in a lot of things you fall in love with you fall in love with it no matter what and you start to really like everything about it and that's kind of how i am now especially with the pipes open and uh you know it's, it's breathing a lot better it just it really rips another thing uh people don't realize when you get a car like this the first time i went out driving it people swarm up around you they get up close to you they drive bad they drive erratic you know when you're when i was first driving i thought what are they doing you know are they trying to carjack me are they trying to run me off the road or whatever they just want to get close and look at it and usually take video of it so you got to get used to that when you have these kind of crazy cars all right we're in first gear it's got a tall first gear let's let it rip Let's take a look at the outside of this bad girl, huh? Just so you know, I got this wrap uh, a while back for one of my race weeks. And, uh, you know, I, I do like it. I can't get the stickers off now. They're not the good stickers. So they are <laughs> stuck there for good, basically, unless I really, I don't know. I don't think they're going to come off. But I uh, did this powder coat orange. I just thought that was cool. It popped. It was fun to do. We did the custom ACR in orange as well. Uh, you know, just to grab attention and have fun on those race weeks. This is not a race week car by any means, but you know me. I'll take what I got and uh, have a lot of fun with it. And it wasn't, you know, I don't need to wrench and stuff when I take these on race week. Let's take a look at the under the hood. Woo! There you go. Big boy V10 right here, guys. And uh, when 
you know, I told you this is kind of the most optioned out. You get this carbon fiber X brace that you get, so it's pretty cool. And this is all carbon fiber in here. It's not like, you know, the, the type that you want to look at, but uh, all these other reinforced pieces here. But this is actually, you know, a pretty light hood. I'm assuming it's not very cheap if I ever wrecked and needed a new one. The other really cool thing is this massive wing on the back. It makes a ton of downforce. You can actually really feel it in this car. And these are so strong. I've actually had my daughter and her friends, I got some cool pictures of them sitting up on top of this. And I have no worry in the world, just didn't want them to stand on the glass and break through it. Besides that, this is the 2016 Viper ACR. She is one bad girl. All right, guys, like I promised you, I'm gonna take you out for a ride in the GTRS real quick too. This is a 2018 and I actually ordered this one. I filled out all the forms and everything else and ordered this. It didn't take a tremendous amount of time, about a half a year back then. And I think I got it right at the end of 2018, 2019. It's, it's awesome. Like I said, it's got a few little touches on it that were specifically what I wanted. I didn't have a big color range uh, either to pick from. You couldn't order, uh, I can't remember what their specific name of it's called, but you know, the pay to order program, you couldn't do that. So I just went with your basic white with black stripes and then a lot of red trim on the interior. These seats obviously are not the main seats. Uh, like I talked about in uh, video part one, if you guys haven't seen that, you should check it out. I show a lot of other cars that I have. So these ones I just put in because they're comfortable. I drive this thing a lot. I have over just over 10,000 miles now. You know, a lot of people bought these and they just sit in their garage. They don't even drive them. They don't use them. And again, like I always say, it's like uh, having a hot girlfriend. Are you saving it for the next guy? <laughs> uh, I'm thoroughly gonna enjoy it. So I don't have any intention to ever to really sell this either. I think only over time the value's gonna go up. I mean, that's the real blessing with some of these specialty high dollar supercars is uh, if they're real special and you get the right one, uh, they actually appreciate in value and they really will do that in any kind of market. So that market is really on another level. I think this one, if they stop making the GT2 RS in, in, in the sense of a real wheel drive turbo car and they don't uh, electrify it, or if they do electrify it, then this one will be really special. This will be the last of the turboed you know, GT2 RSs and the rest will be an electric modification. So uh, for all the Porsche purists, this will be kind of set in a category all by itself and retired. Uh, similar to the Viper, the Viper retired as a body, but also the V10 retired with that one too. You're never gonna ever see that again. I, I really don't see a day that ever comes back unless it's some sort of specialty um, thing and the EPA gives them a break on the emissions and allows them to build a certain amount of uh, cars that are special like that. I don't know, who knows what happens, but overall, uh, this car is special. It's gonna always remain special. It still is the most powerful 911 ever made. And uh, you know, it's got a cool uh, exhaust button, PDK, suspension. Thing of the past, so uh, 
I, I had a really cool uh, convertible. Hopefully I can find some pictures of that. But this one here is just a, a Purist 911 and it's really stripped down. You know, they say it's really lightweight. I think it still weighed over like 3,600 pounds with me in it and uh, you know, full of, you know, some stuff and a few other things. So they're not like super lightweight uh, in, in that sense of the word. Uh, this car was really special to me. I actually got second place at uh, my first race week with Rocky Mountain Race Week. And I went out there to be a, a, a spectator and they said, oh, we actually have some room if you wanna jump in some, one of the brackets. So I said, I don't know what this thing will run, if it'll run uh, 11s or run 10s or, or what. And they're like, well, you wanna run an 11.0 or a 10.0. So it ran a, like a 10.3, I think, a 10.4. It was really, really quick, uh, but it wasn't low enough. So I ran the 11 bracket and uh, learned a first time I ever bracket raced and I'd have to, you know, basically get off the throttle at about a thousand foot and uh, coast through. That's kind of how I did it and uh, got second place. We actually had like, I think, 10 people in my category. I think Cooper was in it. He had a, uh, he was borrowing a Mustang uh, uh, 500, you know, the um, GT 500. It was brand new at the time. And, you know, all the other guys were out. Cleus was out and everybody else. So that was a lot of fun to actually get second place and uh, do it in, in the new modern car which it kind of feels cheap after you do it. The guy that won actually had an Audi. <laughs> and what you get with these cars is an inconsistent launch. As as many times as you want to go, you're going to, you know, you put the traction down, but for the most part, it's a very consistent car. It's a, it's a, it could be a bracket car, you know? You know, you just got to figure out where to let off and how quick it's running for the day and then just, you know, coast through, uh, coast through the, you know, the finish line. So anyhow, uh, yeah, I got second place on that. It was a lot of fun. That was really my first taste of those events. And I'm trying to get a car built now soon to take out. That's a real, you know, built dragster type car that's I can modify to drive on the street and really be, you know, a purist of that event. Hopefully I can uh, get something here soon out of my dragsters, one of them. But uh, there you have it. It's, uh, I got to pull into uh, Ace Hardware. I got to get some, uh, some, you know, self-tapping screws, a few of the little things that are for my other project that I'm doing with the Nova. And, uh, you know, Ace Hardware's the place to be. <laughs> All right, guys. So that there is the GT2 RS, and I thought I'd take you for a little rip. Let's see, let's see a little more here. Woo! She's quick. All right, guys, so this is my 2016 Chevy Silverado Duramax 2500. This has really turned into my daily driver. It's really a tow rig for me, out of town tow rig. It does outperform the Lightning in that sense. And I mean, honestly, I do just love this thing. I'm, I'm actually building a pretty big stereo for this. Just been waiting on a few things to uh, be able to turn this over to the stereo guys so they can have it for a few weeks. I used to have this exact same truck back in the day. It was a 2016 GMC Denali and uh, Diesel Brothers built that for me. You can check out the video. Somehow, some way, the picture of these two knuckleheads floating around online that they took of the Denali, well, somebody actually biting on those, and we may have a potential buyer. I just bought the most amazing truck. did a pretty good job. I had my doubts, but it turned out to be a good project for the shop. Well, that was a lot more powerful than this. It was actually deleted by them. Don't worry, guys, I'm not riding them out. They had already gotten trouble for it. But the Diesel Brothers say their business was targeted. According to a lawsuit filed against the Diesel Brothers, Sparks and his team stripped pieces like the DPF from their trucks, violating the Clean Air Act. I actually had to have a, a lawyer, investigator, or somebody come over and they actually crawled underneath my truck and took pictures. I had to like allow them to 
do that. It was really, really odd that I was like kind of pulled into their big lawsuit that they were involved in. But other than that, I did love the truck. It was just way too big. It was 12 inch lift, 40 something inch tires. It was just huge. And this is more my speed. I did have to cut the fenders a little bit, uh, trim them up so I could fit 35s. I just like the bigger stance on the tires. They're not any name brand that I don't think a lot of people have heard of. I like to try new things and uh, these ones sound great. They have a really low highway noise and they're also uh, fairly good at looking on the tread. So still kind of an old man truck. It doesn't have a lift, just a leveling kit. But what you can see is that I did take, uh, uh, I didn't take them off, but the previous owner took off the uh, torsion bars. So it is a coilover up in the front. It does have an air ride in the back. And uh, I do have air horns on this. Let's just see. Maybe I'll do it, let's see. See if he'll respond. <laughs> yeah, that was on here prior. <laughs> oh, that's a good one when you wanna trick your family to walking around a truck. So, yep, now this is it. This is my daily driver until uh, the Audi gets fixed or I figure out what I'm gonna do next. Um, I'm not a really big truck daily driver type of guy, but you know, this thing's awesome. Now I think we should take you over and take a look at the Audi that I was just talking about. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty terrible. <sighs> Here it is guys, my RS Q8, my <laughs> daily driver, the terrible luck continues. I've had a few issues with this, just kind of going into limp mode and a whole bunch of other weird stuff ever since I've kind of owned it. Apparently, dealer is saying now, the engine is blown. Yep, and they found a tune on the computer. Let me just say, I did not tune it. So I don't know what to do with these guys. I, I got a lawyer right now. We'll see if uh, they have anything to say about it, but uh, doesn't look very good, guys. Might be one of those things I gotta find a new engine and pay to put it in myself. Uh, it's not, uh, not gonna be cheap at all. But just for kicks, let's just see if it will even start. All right. All right, you guys can hear it. It doesn't sound very good. I'm trying to hang this out there. I gotta leave my foot on the throttle. Definitely missing um, on some cylinders. I keep getting this alert. I know the battery's completely dead. I don't know, man. It doesn't sound like the engine's like completely blown. I don't know if it just lost compression in a cylinder or what, and then it just turns off. So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. Maybe I should get a second opinion on this thing. You just wouldn't think that Audi would misdiagnose it, you know? So anyhow, uh, this is the interior. It's pretty nice. Kind of peanut butter. I don't know. Some people like it. I, I like it now that it's like, you know, it's kind of aging a little bit. It's darker. I only had 20,000 miles on this thing. Yeah, so it's a tough pill to, to swallow, especially when I'm staring at that every time I come over here. That one actually, uh, we're finally getting to some settlement with the uh, insurance company. They're talking about uh, super devaluating it because they said that it wasn't worth anything when I wrecked it. Uh, that it was already $100,000 lower due to me taking out the interior and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, they're saying that was worth $100,000. Got quite a fight on my hands with that one. So this girl is another one. And of course I have the Ford Lightning as well. All right, guys, so that concludes my uh, walkthrough of all my vehicles. I drove a few of them for you. I have a lot more planned for this uh, this year coming up. I, I'm really, really excited. I, I just gotta get through this weird car funk I've had, these three, you know, really expensive cars just uh, wrecking or uh, taking a crap on me. So I'll get through it. Uh, you guys will see me rise above all this and uh, get back to, you know, hitting on all eight cylinders, if you will. But again, please uh, please subscribe, that, that means a lot to me. I'm trying to hit 100,000 followers. Don't even comment, don't even like, I don't even care. Just make sure that if you guys watch it, just, just subscribe, I really appreciate it. And as always, that's just another day. Chilling with Chet. Uh, this is a really high incline, so we have to get it right. Can't afford to screw it up. I'm just concerned about breaking even, if that comes. Great, you can save $15,000.